Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitu fillah Where we last left off in our study of the creed The creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah We're discussing some of the attributes of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and one of the important aspects or cert, uh, characteristics of Ahl Sunnah is that they respect the pious predecessors wholeheartedly. They believe that the methodology of the pious predecessors or the pious persons is much more saved from mistakes than that of others and is more correct and firm consisting of more knowledge and wisdom so that they believe that the menhaj or methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah the pious predecessors is the correct way that it is the Sabila Mu'mineen it is the Sabila Najah that it is the path of success it is the path of the pious predecessors and it is a path that should be followed. And that is the path of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And it is the path of the saved sect. So, therefore, that which opposes it, that which goes against it, that which deviates, it from, deviates from it, is incorrect and should not be followed. And this comes from many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and just one hadith is the hadith of uh, iftiraq, the hadith where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said iftaraqat al-yahud ala ihta wa sab'in firqa wa iftaraqat al-nasara ala ithnatayn wa sab'in firqa wa satiftariku hadhi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa kullaha fi al-nar ila wahida kulla man hiya ya rasulullah qala man kana ala mithli ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al-yawm so the hadith of iftiraq refers to the hadith where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my ummah into 73 sects all of them in the fire except one and then the companions they said those companions who were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, who are they? And the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So that lets us know that the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and the Sunnah of his Sahaba is what we follow. And this is the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And that this refers to when we talk about the minhaj of the Salaf and the minhaj of the Sahaba we're talking about those things that they reach consensus on. We're not talking about what an individual from the Sahaba might have did out of ijtihad, out of striving to make the correct uh, jurisprudent uh, ruling or uh, practice. But rather we're referring to those things that they are united upon and generally when we refer to the minhaj of the Sahaba or the minhaj of the Salaf we're talking about their we're talking about Aqidah those things they, they had consensus on especially all the major Masail in Aqidah and we're talking about those things which they had consensus on in their Fiqh and with regards to the rest of the aspects of the religion so this is the path of the Sabi'il al-Mu'mineen and this is the path of Ahl Sunnah and this is what we believe is the correct path, the correct way for understanding Islam. Ahl Sunnah, they strictly oppose interpretations regarding the attributes of Allah and giving wrong meanings to the verses of the Quran and authentic ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa They are quite obedient to Islamic law, uh, giving preference to textual proofs over the human intellect Wherever they see any verse or authentic hadith, they don't see any room for interpretation and false thoughts. Rather, they submit their intellects to the definite orders of the Quran and the Sunnah. This is a very important part of minhaj and a very important part 
a qaida in itaqad or aqidah as well because this is how we understand the text and this is how Ahlul Sunnah understands the creed uh, for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa in seven places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he rose above his throne Ahlul Sunnah doesn't debate about that Ahlul Sunnah doesn't question how Ahlul Sunnah doesn't question, question why Ahlul Sunnah doesn't say well it was like this make a resemblance Ahlul Sunnah doesn't need to change the meaning tahrif or uh, uh, any other way of twisting the meanings and making new meanings or changing the linguistic meaning of it or changing the actual letters and the syntax of the the terms but rather Ahlul Sunnah makes taslim they say no we believe uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne we don't describe his throne in other than the way he subhanahu wa ta'ala described it and the way the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described it in an authentic hadith and we believe that and we believe he rose above his throne we don't describe how we don't say that oh that means he's in a place or that means he's in a direction or he's confined by the creation no Ahl Sunnah doesn't even get into those matters because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't get into those matters and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala didn't get into those matters but those matters only became relevant because when Ahl al-Bid'ah began to try to ask questions like like what was posed to Imam Malik while he was teaching the Haram a man said, Ya, ya Abi Abdullah, Kaiva Istoa, how did he rise? How did Allah rise above his throne? This is what a man asked uh, one of the rules of Ahl al-Bid'ah and I think it was uh, Wasl ibn al -Qa'ah. Uh, and he asked this question to Imam Malik. Imam Malik began to sweat profusely. And he said, Al Istoa Malum Wa Kaif Majhu Wasual Anhu Bida. He said that Istoa is Malum, it's known. It's known. Ar Rahman rose above a stone. That's known because it's in the Quran. And also, this also, uh, as the ulama just uh, explained this hadith, this this narration of Imam Malik, al istawa ma'loom, that we know what it means in the Arabic language. We know istawa means to rise. One of the meanings of istawa is to rise or irtifa, to raise. We know what that means. There's no new meaning all of a sudden. Al istawa ma'loom. It's known. It means to rise. Wa kafiya majhul. And how is unknown? How is unknown? We don't ask how. Imam Malik was from the Salaf, and he was, you know, they had taslim bin nusus. They were, they were. Their hearts were at ease with regards to the Quran and the Sunnah. They didn't question it, and didn't ask how and how it's going to relate to the context of our times and how this no these are questions that we fall into these are issues that we fall into from our weakness in Iman and our weakness in our menhaj and our weakness in our itiqad and our far, for being far from uh, the time of the Messenger وسلم, and the increase in shubahat and, and doubts and things that have come to us so Ahl Bid'ah at that time they, they, they began this Bid'ah so what did Ahl Sunnah do? Ahl Sunnah had to refute this bid'ah. When a new bid'ah came into the religion, or as people tried to bring it into the religion, a new understanding, a new minhaj, a new methodology, a new aqidah, then what did Ahl Sunnah do? They would refute it. So Ahl Sunnah began to refute those, and this is how the arguments began to grow, as we see today when you discuss with an ashari or someone who has an ashari itiqad. Uh, creed, especially with regards to al asmai wa sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll see that they'll try to box you in. Oh, uh, so what you're saying is that Allah rose above his throne, that means this, and we infer this. And so they use their whole intellect and it goes in a, a circle. Their argumentation goes in a circle. Ahl Sunnah breaks that chain, Ahl Sunnah breaks that circle, says, La, we make taslim to the nusus.
We don't ask how. And we don't make resemblance to Allah and His creation. And we don't make resemblance between the creation of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ لَيْسَ كَمِثْ لِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is nothing that resembles him. لَيْسَ كَمِثْ لِهِ شَيْءٌ Nothing. وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates making a resemblance between him and his creation or his creation in him. لَيْسَ كَمِثْ لِهِ شَيْءٌ There's nothing like him. وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ And he is the all-seeing and all-hearing. He hears and sees everything. Now, look, the creation hears and sees. I hear and see, you hear and see, or whether you wouldn't be listening and hearing this video. You hear, you possess the ability to hear and see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the ability to hear and see. But Allah negated that there's resemblance. So let's go with Allah's argument, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and go with that and make taslim. So Allah hears and we hear. But, laysa kamith li shay. So now we to tabbuk have the qaid on on this we we put we implement we implement that that uh, principle upon with this ayat and in this what appears to be attention and understanding it lets us know that yes Allah hears and He sees because He said He hears and sees He said He's the all hearing and all seeing well I can lisa kamithli shay but there is nothing like him, meaning our hearing and our seeing is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. No, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything. You hear what's limited. You hear a certain amount of decibels. You're very limited. You see a limited distance. Perhaps you may require glasses. You may require instrument or tools to facilitate you being able to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs nothing. He sees everything. He sees the ant on the dark rock in the middle of the desert, in the dark of the night. He sees what's going on in China and what's going on in Seattle. He sees what's going on in uh, 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 Germany. He sees what's going on in, in Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ahlul Sunnah makes Tislim in those Nasus. And we only go into more detail because Ahl al-Bid'ah brought shibahat and doubt which spread throughout the Ummah. Wallahum sta'an. Uh, another important point the Shaykh mentioned there is when he mentioned that Ahl al-Sunni gives preference to the textual proofs over the human intellect and this is exactly what we're talking about as far as Minhaj that Ahl al-Sunnah gives preference to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the Nasus, over the, uh, over the intellect. Meaning that we don't make our Aqidah from our intellect, but instead we say, we, we go with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ahl al-Iman. After, A'udhu Billah min shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Meem, Thalika al-Kitab Allah ar-Rayba fi hudin lil-Muttaqeen, al-Ladheena yu'minun bil-Ghayb, wa yu'minun الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة الذين يؤمنون بالغيب طيب that's the shahid in سورة البقرة الله سبحانه وتعالى says ذلك الكتاب الله رب في this is a book in which there is no doubt so أهل السنة makes تسليم of those نصوص we don't doubt the Quran and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes who Ahla about Ahla Iman, Ahla uh, the Mu'mineen. Aladina Yu'minuna Bil Ghaib. Those who believe in the unseen. Aladina Yu'minuna Bil Ghaib. They believe in the unseen. So Ahl Sunnah, we believe in it. Our intellect, we don't know, we only know about the Ghaib, the unseen world, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Most of us have not had contact with jinn, have not seen jinn that we are aware of. Most of us, I would say. However, there are many who have. The point being is what? 
is there from the world of the unseen. The malaika. We haven't seen the malaika. That's the world of the unseen. We haven't seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the unseen. Ahlul sunnah Ahl iman yu'minun bil ghaib. They believe in the ghaib. They believe in the unseen that was described for them in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they take preference, give preference to the text over the over their intellect. Your intellect will say, No, well, I've only seen people in these countries and this color and this, and you know, I you know, I, I only go with my sensory perceptions. This is what many people build their aqidah in their life based upon only what they can see. The atheists, they believe, okay, you know, I can see the plant, I see the books, they exist, I see this AC, I see this computer, they exist, I see you, you exist, but that which I don't see doesn't exist. This is how they try to uh, refute the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Ahli Iman, they believe in those things they've never seen. You minunu al ghayb. It's a ghayb. It's not, it's unseen. We don't see it. But we believe in it. We believe in the text. Ahl Sunnah assemble all textual proofs regarding any matter under consideration, rejecting the allegorical evidences with the explicit ones. So Ahl Sunnah, that they uh, they look at the the Quran and the Sunnah together to explain one another on how to practice the Quran. We look to the Sunnah. We look to other uh, ayats in the Quran to understand how to practice and we reject making analogies unless unless the textual evidences lead us to, to that and Ahl Sunnah they practice the muhkamat those clear verses for, and that's how they build their, their deen off the clear verses, those which there is no dispute, as is mentioned in Ali Imran, about the 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 Ummul Kitab, you know, the, the those verses which are clear, the Muhkamat. Whereas Ahl Bidah and those people who have Zay and deviance in their hearts, they Take the mutashabihat, those verses which have uh, are ambiguous in their meaning, meaning that they're open to more and more than one interpretation, and that they build their creed and their minhaj off those verses. Ahl Sunnah has the reverse minhaj. Ahl Sunnah are the models for the pious ones seeking to be guided to the right path. This is a result of their firmness on the truth, complete conformity with all the matters of Islamic monotheism, joining of knowledge with worship, appropriately merging between their means and complete trust in Allah. They merge between striving for their worldly provisions and abstinence in worldly respects, merging between the fear of Allah and hoping for His mercy, between loving and hating for His sake, they merge between their politeness and mercy for the believers and harshness and angers and anger with disbelievers as well as their distinguishing qualities irrespective of the differences of their time. So Ahl Sunnah, they are firm upon the Haq. They're firm upon those principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And they practice and they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their ibadah is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, ikhlas, lillah, regardless of the time, the time period. Ahl sunnah do not take for themselves names other than Islam, sunnah, and the jama'ah. So Ahl sunnah only refers to themselves by those names in the sharia, and we'll get into those a little bit later, names like uh, Ahl Athar, as the Salaf had these names, the Salaf, uh, Ahl Athar. Ahl Hadith, Afirka uh, Tanajia, the same sect, Ataifat uh, al uh, all of these were names known, and we'll find those in the books of Ittiqad and Creed, that refer to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So Ahl Sunnah restricts themselves to those names and the Salafiyun, as we use 
very commonly in the contemporary times because it goes back to the Seleth and it goes back. It has a, a, a synod, you know, it goes back. But other names, when you call yourself Ashidi, you go back to an individual. When you call yourself Diobandi, you go back to a place. You, when you call yourself Nakshabandi, when you call yourself, you know, it's either going and, you know, referring to yourself by a place, and this is as a group and a sect, or to an individual, a man. We don't call ourselves Umari or Khattabis, you know, as for Umar ibn Khattab, which he is more rightfully uh, worthy of being followed than Imam uh, Abu Hassan al Ashari. However, Ahl Sunnah, they go to those names which are Sharia based names and they refer to themselves to those names by those names. And we will stop there until the next dars. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.